And now, from WKYC-TV Cleveland, this is Channel 3 News. You've seen the fights and the yelling and the screaming. Are these people really mad, or are they just acting out of script? Is the Springer Show jerry-rigged? Tonight, a Target 3 investigation. It's a fake. That's what several former Jerry Springer Show guests say about the knock em down drag em out TV slugfest. Our two-month Target 3 and exclusive investigation was uncovered some Ohio guests who claim they were told what to say and how and when to fight. And they're part of a shocking national story that is still breaking about allegations of deception on the Jerry Springer Show. Is it jerry-rigged? Here's a Target 3 investigation and Phil Hayes. We've all seen it. Titles like, I have a surprise, I'm cheating, dumped for another woman, and I'm pregnant by my brother. This Ohio woman is part of a national coming out party. and She's one of several former Springer Show guests that say it's all fake, told to make up their stories and told how and when to fight. The storyline's completely outrageous, and anybody who actually lived a life like that would never go on TV and actually say it, in my opinion. So you were told to lie and did? Pretty much, yeah. They gave us a storyline, and we were the actors and actresses to come in and fill it. She's afraid to be identified. She and these 16 people are saying the same thing. The 16 appeared on the syndicated show Extra tonight. They all claim moments before their appearances, they were pressured to sign an agreement not to talk about their appearances, or they'd be sued for $80,000. She said she was denied a copy of the agreement, so was Target 3. She and these former guests all went on national TV to talk about troubled lives, dysfunctional families, and love affairs. They say they're coming forward now to help. I guess to warn other people, to help save other people from the embarrassment, the humiliation, and, and losing out on what we lost out. Yeah. I did make them realize they're making a lot of money off of y'all looking stupid yeah. on TV. And there's more. Local radio host Howie Green of WENZ Radio says he was bumped to the audience when he refused to lie on the show. All along, including the commercial break before I was introduced, I was coaxed and coaxed and coaxed to take on, uh, to take on my competition on the air, and I did. I'm ashamed of it, but I did. Last week, our two-month investigation took us to Chicago, where the show is taped and guests go through metal detectors. We went behind the scenes with our hidden camera. Jerry Springer wouldn't talk to us then, but today he finally responded to the allegations. If someone's faking it, I don't want them on the show. I mean, that's pretty clear. You know, I, so I don't, I'm not upset with the headline at all. I just want to make sure it's true. If it's true that someone's faking it on our show, I don't want that. I want to, I think the show works because the guests are real. Phil Hayes, Target 3, Cleveland. So what's the background on Jerry Springer? Springer was once the mayor of Cincinnati. He ran for governor in the early 1980s of Ohio and dropped out of the race when it was revealed he paid a prostitute with a personal check. Then he began his television career in Cincinnati. The man convicted of killing Martin Luther King is dead. 70-year-old James Earl Ray died of liver disease in a Nashville hospital. A drifter and petty thief, Ray was serving a 99-year sentence for gunning down Dr. King in 1968 at a Memphis hotel. Ray confessed to the killing, but later recanted, fueling strong suspicions that others were involved in the assassination. Many now fear the answer to that question may go with Ray to his grave. I am convinced that James uh, Ray, in fact, did kill Dr. King, but did not act alone. Now, in the months before Ray's death, Dr. King's family called for a new trial, hoping new evidence would be discovered. Some breaking news to report out of Lake County tonight. Lake West Hospital has confirmed that Kirtland Police Chief Dennis Yarborough has died. Now, we don't have all the details, but apparently this did not happen during any kind of police activity. Now, if we learn more about the chief's death, we'll pass it on during this newscast. Two Cleveland women, including a nun, were murdered in El Salvador 17 years ago, along with two other religious women. Tonight, word that the soldiers who killed them may be released from jail for good behavior. Tomorrow, protesters will go to the White House and ask Congress to petition Secretary of State Albright to reopen the investigation into those murders. Last month, the guilty soldiers said they were ordered to murder by higher-ups. Bishop Anthony Pillars first official duty back in 81 was to collect the body of Sister Dorothy Kazel and attend the funeral of Jean Donovan. And we also have felt that the response of the Salvadoran government and quite frankly the response of our own government did not address that issue adequately. 
and I would be for the peace of the families and for the sake of justice and for the sake of uh, justice to the to the memory of those women and all the good work that they have done I think the truth needs to be uh, uh, discerned here Pella also protests the School of the Americas Military Training Institute in Fort Benning, Georgia. It's believed this is where the Salvadoran soldiers were trained to kill, and he believes Congress should close it down. Now, you wouldn't likely eat green meat in a restaurant infested with roaches, dead rats, human feces, and other filth. 100 health violations in all. The city doesn't think you should either. So tonight, one diner is closed. The city shut down Viola's restaurant on Cleveland's east side, that was guilty of all those violations, but it wasn't a health code that drew authorities to this restaurant to begin with. It was reported drug activity. But they found the filth when they arrived, so they shut Viola's down. Well, there has been some talk at City Hall about creating a sort of restaurant health report card. It might be prominently displayed, so before you go in, you could see just how well the eatery is doing in meeting state health codes. Now, this is not even an official proposal yet, but... Uh, but we sent Channel 3 reporter Monica Robbins out to see if restaurant goers and restaurant owners would go for it. Monica? Well, Judd Ramon, a reaction to the idea is mixed, but how would you like to walk up to a restaurant and right in the window would be a report card letting you know exactly how that restaurant measures up? Every time you walk into a Cleveland restaurant, are you sure it meets the health guidelines? Just because it's open for business doesn't always mean it's passed the test. We're not really required to inform the public of anything of our standards or if we've passed or failed, um, which I think is very stupid law. Declan Sinna thinks a restaurant report card is a good idea and his patrons have a right to know that his restaurant has met every standard. Keep the standards up because we are in the food industry and it's very important that the people that we're serving know what's going on. You know, if I go into a restaurant, I want to know that they're reporting to the, the highest standards of uh, safety and um, health regulations. And what should the report card tell you? I would just expect to know what the restaurant, what the requirements are and what the regulations are. And if that restaurant meets them? Exactly, yes. But some people have more faith in the health department than a certification notice. I really don't pay, would pay much attention to that. Uh, I figure there's a health board out there already that they have to pass so I figure it's it's if it's not safe they'll, they'll shut it down now there's no word yet on where the proposal stands but if you would like to know where your favorite restaurant stands on the health inspection pretty much you have to inform the county health department by phone or in written notice for, to, for that information. Judd Ramona, back to you. Okay, thank you, Monica. Well, several hundred people turned out today at a rally to show support for suspended East Tech High School principal Terry Butler. Butler's on leave without pay after it was revealed he covered up a conviction for forging prescriptions almost 20 years ago. Students, parents, ministers, and other community leaders say Butler has turned East Tech around, improving academic and athletic performance as well as attendance. Butler said he would rather see perfect attendance than students staging a walkout to show support for him. You can honor me, you can honor my memory by having a 100% day at school, not by having a walkout, not by... Are doing things that are negative. Well, one minister at the rally said, we will not have peace in this town till we have Terry Butler back. A member of the State Board of Education promised to work to have Butler return to his position. The new pill to battle male impotence is pulling in millions of new patients and hefty profits. The name of this little blue tablet is Viagra, and it's getting solid reviews from doctors as well as effective treatment. Among the 30 million or so American men who struggle with impotence, word is spreading fast. Here in Cleveland and across the country, patients seeking prescriptions for the medication are swarming the offices of physicians. Many, many calls every day from, from new patients and from old patients who have been waiting for the medication, calling, wanting the drug, asking for it, uh, demanding to get in. It's, it, it really has been a phenomenon. This is something that men have been waiting for for years. Dr. Levine says Viagra will be effective even for older men in their 70s and 80s, although folks who take nitroglycerin for heart conditions cannot take this new drug safely.
To give this some perspective, before the release of Viagra, stock in Pfizer, the company that makes the drug, sold for $69 a share. Today, that same stock was selling for $115 a share. Mm. Well, if a sexual predator is just released from prison and moved in next door to you, you'd probably want to know about it, right? And a new Ohio law says you should. Most judges are upholding what's known as our version of Megan's Law, but one Northeast Ohio judge isn't. And because of that, you could have a sex offender living next door. Here's Target 3 investigator Phil Hayes. This is Todd Green. Less than six months ago, he was released from prison for molesting a three-year-old girl. And now, as our undercover camera shows, he freely walks the streets in his neighborhood. His neighbors didn't know who was living next to them until we told them. It's a little disturbing. You know, I mean, there's a lot of, lot of kids and, you know, young people in the area. Should his neighbors know? Maybe. A new Ohio law says when a convicted sex offender is released, his or her sentencing judge must hold a hearing to determine if the offender is likely to commit another sex crime. If so, the offender is labeled a predator, and his or her neighbors must be told. But Todd Green's sentencing judge, Martin Parks of Lake County, hasn't held a hearing for Green or any of the other 37 sex offenders he sentenced because he thinks the new law is unconstitutional. Because of the judge's decision, so far, four have been released, and many others are scheduled to be released before the end of the year. And they could move next to you, and you'll never know about it. Todd Green says his neighbors shouldn't know. What do you mean you were convicted of a crime? What do you mean for a crime you never committed? Leave me alone, please. We want to give you an opportunity to talk about the story that we're going to put leave you in. Do you have leave any me. comment at all? Please leave me alone. I got a bad heart. Leave me alone. Will you just give me a comment about you being involved in the story? Leave me alone. Do you feel your neighbors have a right to know where you live? No, because I never did nothing. Please don't. You were convicted. Target 3 went along with Cuyahoga County deputies to show how the law is supposed to work. Yep, that's him right there. This sexual predator just got out of prison. The first step is for deputies to verify where he lives. Just checking to make sure you, you're here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the house, cleaning the house, washing the floors. All right. Okie okay, doke. All right. The second step is to warn all the neighbors. It's about uh, a sexual predator living next door to you. And Mr. the third step is to protect children by notifying all schools and daycare centers, like this one, within a mile of the predator's home. This is uh, for notification of a sexual predator that lives within a mile of uh, the daycare here. Okay. This is uh, the picture of him. When we come back, Target 3 investigator Phil Hayes confronts the judge, and we hear from victims who say they live in fear. On July 12th, Kirby Termizi found over $30,000 in his cab. Coincidentally, enough to purchase a redesigned Mercedes-Benz C-Class. Yet, he returned every penny to the woman who left it. We at Mercedes thought someone who'd return enough money to buy our car should have one. Kronheim's new home fashion seal. Introductory savings of 30 to 55% store-wide, plus free financing until 1999 for you at Kronheim's. Trucks, cars, imports, you name it. The deluxe lube and all service from Walmart's Tire and Lube Express with pins or our Quaker State at a great low price every day. We have Goodyear's, BF Goodrich, we even have Michelin. All at everyday low prices. It's all here at Walmart plus a few things you won't find anywhere else. I did my shopping, I was ready to go, so was my car. Hey, bring whatever you drive to Walmart's Tire and Lube Express. We'll take care of your car while you take care of the rest. It's I-T-S, Mita, for copiers and faxes. It's Imaging Technology Systems. Call 674-MITA. It's the right call. How do you like your eggs in the morning? I'd like mine with a kiss. Up or down. I'll never frown as long as I get my kiss. Yeah! Oh, it's something there to remind me. If you ask us, it just tastes better. How good can it get? A powerful 132 horsepower engine. 
New interior refinements, split fold-down rear seats, race-inspired handling, and over 40 total quality improvements. How good can it get? It gets this good. Plymouth Neon 10355. Or now, it gets even better with 1.9% APR for up to 60 months for over $2,000 in savings. Only at your Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. Kronheim's new home fashion seal. Introductory savings of 30 to 55% store-wide, plus free financing until 1999 for you at Kronheim's. We've told you about one judge's decision which could leave 38 sex predators roaming the streets. Now, Target 3 investigator Phil Hayes continues with the daily fears of the victims. These women were preschool age when they were attacked repeatedly by a family member. They're still so afraid we agreed to conceal their identities. Their attacker is about to be released. Judge Parks was his sentencing judge, and because of his refusal to apply the new law to those 38 cases, these victims won't know where their attacker lives. It's only fair that people get to at least know and, and are aware of this man and what he's done. Uh, no different than a murderer in my eyes. If one child doesn't have to sit here 30 years from now and wonder, why did I have to go through that, then that's what's important. This woman's 8-year-old was attacked by another one of those 38 convicts sentenced no by Judge Parks. That attacker is also already out of prison, but the mother's never been officially notified where he is, and she's still haunted by the last words he said to her. When he told me he'd kill me, that I hadn't seen the end of him yet. In all 38 cases, the men were already locked up behind bars when the state's new sexual predator law took effect last July. And as far as Judge Martin Parks is concerned, the law should only apply to those who were sentenced after the law took effect. What does Judge Parks have to say about his decision? Well, he says he's only abiding by the United States and Ohio constitutions. We told him the victims feel unsafe. I just want you to answer to the concerns of the victims, but they seem to be less important in this whole scheme of things, then... Well, that's, that's an opinion that you have. That's their opinion. That's not my opinion. No, it sounds like your opinion. No, that's their opinion, Your Honor. That's an opinion that they've echoed to me. Well, I, I certainly don't believe that. But the Lake County prosecutor said this judge is wrong. The state legislature, when they passed the Ohio's Megan Law, House Bill 180, specifically said the reason we're passing this is for public welfare and safety, to protect the people. The, the mother of one young victim said she's tired of hearing about the rights of criminals. She said the attacker never considered their rights. He imposed a life sentence on us, and there will be no early relief. Now, cases like this are being heard in courthouses like this all over the state of Ohio, but Judge Parks is the only judge anywhere around the Cleveland area that is opting not to hear those cases. So who is his boss? The people of Lake County who elect him. And he's up for re-election in the year 2000. Judd Ramona? All right. Thank you, Phil. And to put some perspective on this, there are 8,000 convicted sex offenders in the state of Ohio. Well, they are looking for a new home, and you might be able to help. Between 25 and 30 dogs, including these two, are now up for adoption at the Geauga County Animal Shelter. They've been nursed back to health after being seized from a breeder who has neglecting the animals. Because there are so many requests for adoption, shelter officials are holding a drawing to determine who gets the pets. We've had a couple hundred people interested in the dogs. Uh, we will draw numbers out of a bin. Those people that are chosen will be asked to come down and pick from the dogs that are available. Now here's how you can learn more about this dog adoption program. Call the Geauga County Humane Society at 440-285-9440. There's a $100 adoption fee that covers all shots plus spade and neutering. You have until next Tuesday to adopt a dog. Hmm. David's Coco the weather dog might want a roommate. Yeah, how about Coco? What, is, what does Coco have to say about the weather Coco today? would love to have a roommate. With Mother's Day around the corner, that'd be a perfect gift. Weather-wise, it's been beautiful out there. A lot of folks saying, Dave, you know, can we get a nice stretch of this? Is it going to last one or two days? Looks like this pattern is going to last at least five days before we get any chance of precipitation. There may be a little fly in the ointment. We'll take a look at all the possibilities. Let's start things out with our 3D vantage point and honing in on the western Great Lakes. Notice some of that cloud cover there on the horizon. That's an association with a weak cold front that's going to continue to track south and eastward. Right now, expected to come through with not much fanfare, maybe some fair weather clouds, 
We'll certainly continue to monitor that as it moves across the western Great Lakes. You can see all the cloud cover off to our south and east. And again, that's in association with the low pressure center right now the, over the Atlantic coast. That's going to be tracking eastward and keeping most of the showery weather just off to our east. Vigorous ridge of high pressure from portions of the north coast all the way down into the southwest controlling our weather pattern. Nice conditions for us right now. But again, here's that cold front we're going to be watching very closely. Should start to cool things off by the beginning of the weekend, but it looks like right now we're going to remain relatively dry over the next several days. Again, here's a look at some of the showers from northern New England all the way down into the southeast. And all this is going to be slowly pushing in an easterly direction. Outside right now, 53 degrees, our current temperature with a matching humidity. Barometer is currently on the rise and a very calm wind officially at Hopkins International Airport. Afternoon highs for us today. Very pleasant, 63 degrees, 41 was our morning low. You can see how that stacks up to the average temperature. Get up extra early. It's going to be a beautiful one tomorrow. Sunrise at 635. All right, here's your forecast in detail. Mostly clear sky tonight, pleasant, 40 to 44 degrees with the northwest wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then for you Friday, great way to start your weekend. Lots of sunshine, a few fair weather clouds in the afternoon. Highs, about 69 degrees. Looking ahead into the future, your Weather Watch 3 forecast calls for more great weather as we go into Saturday. Again, things expected to cool off a bit. Highs only 61, but we get back up into the 70s by Sunday. Monday looking pretty good, and looks like our next chance for rain comes on Tuesday with a high temperature of 71 degrees. So we're on a weather roll. Oh, All right. yeah. Thanks, Thanks. Dave. Okay. NBA playoff jitters, did they bug the Cavs? Jim Donovan's got highlights coming up in sports. We've all heard the lines about wrinkles at the beauty counter, but until now, science gave us no proof. I'll tell you what they say really works up next. Hi, everybody. I'm Donna Terrell. And I'm Don Hammond. It's a traffic nightmare, but that could change depending on how a boat goes. Find out tomorrow morning if your commute will get any easier. And it's a morning marathon right here on Channel 3 News today. We'll see if Mark and Marshall have what it takes to make it to the finish line. And whether we make it or not, I'm going to have that traffic in your Weather Watch 3 forecast, too. All right. It's info to go in the morning. So join us tomorrow morning on Channel 3 News today. Channel 3 Weather is sponsored by your local Ford dealer, winning Ohio over. You want more style? You want more toughness? You want more features? Get it all when you lease Ford Ranger for just $159 a month for 24 months. Ranger's got a sporty look that's heavy on fun and piled high with great features like stereo cassette, deep dish aluminum wheels, sliding rear window, and more. All for just $159 a month. That's $159 a month for Northeast Ohio's best-selling compact pickup. Get more with Ford Ranger only at your Ford dealer. That's why we're winning Ohio over. We've discovered two comets. They're both headed for Earth. Does anyone know how big the one was like killed all the dinosaurs? But we are confident the missile attack will succeed. We need the arming codes for the nukes. Oceans will rise. You're gonna die if you stay here. If you love me, you'll go. Cities will fall. Ah! Get out of there! But hope... I'm holding you. ...will survive. We will prevail. Deep impact. Life will go on. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, May 8th, everywhere. Come on, Pierre! Moms are coming in. MKFC! Gotta go. Give mom more time to play. Bring home 12 pieces of the Colonel's Chicken. Original recipe, extra tasty crispy or tender roast, just $9.99. If you clean your plate, you can go out after dinner. Mother's Day. Isn't it time for some really good chicken? This is what the American people are looking at if Washington gets its way. More tax and spend. Half a trillion dollars in new tobacco taxes to pay for new federal spending. The result? Huge new taxes for working people. Cigarettes at $5 a pack, $50 a carton. A black market in cigarettes with unregulated access to children. Jobs at risk for thousands of Americans. Even with a huge budget surplus, does Washington really have to raise taxes again? It's time to speak out. It's the great Jeep event. And great deals on your favorite Jeep vehicles are showing up wherever you look. Like a low $2.99 a month lease on the Go Anywhere Grand Cherokee Laredo. An unbelievable $2.59 a month lease on a 190 horsepower Cherokee Sport. And a great price on Jeep Wrangler. The landscape will never be the same during the great Jeep event. Brought to you by the most award-winning brand of 4x4s on Earth. See your superstar Jeep and Eagle dealer today. This is the first time that it's been proven that antioxidants topically applied to the skin can reduce the appearance of lines and wrinkles. 
It's not exactly the fountain of youth, but it's the closest thing you'll find at the beauty counter. Researchers in France say certain vitamins and minerals can make wrinkles disappear. Yes, disappear by 23%. Scientists are especially excited about the antioxidants in the cream, vitamin C, and E. S.A. Lauder funded this study. Well, it's a study, but I'm sure a very vibrant product will soon follow. Beautifully said. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> From a man that's never had any wrinkles. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. Rough start for the Cavs tonight as the NBA playoffs. The second season started. I think the Cavs are still playing in the first season. They lose by 29 tonight in game one in Indiana. Second worst loss in Cavs playoff history. Reggie Miller was on fire. First quarter, he scored 11 points. He had 19 for the game. Watch this. They come out running. Jalen Rose lays it in, and the Cavs were in trouble. They got in early foul trouble, and they were ice cold. Then Chris Mullen got heated up. Mullen pumped that one home. He had four three-pointers in the game. He hit for 20. He went from that corner, and he goes to this corner, and he nails it, and it was an ambush at Market Square Arena. Z, Zadrunas Ogaskis had 16. Sean Kemp had 25. Wesley Person did not score in the game. Cavs lose 106 to 77 the final score in that one how would you like to be at Cavs practice tomorrow in Indiana, Indianapolis when they gather around Mike Fratello Larry Bird says okay we won game one but let's not lay down for game two I know these guys I've talked to them after the game and they have to stay focused see I've been on both ends of this I've won playoff games by large margin in the first game and I've lost them and I know how Cleveland's going to come back and I know how they're going to react so I'm sure these guys will come out focused and hopefully do the same things. Larry's pretty pumped up. Game two Saturday afternoon, 1 o'clock tip-off time right here on Channel 3. Game one of the series between the Hawks and Hornets tonight as the NBA playoff series continued there. And Lenny Wilkins on the sideline. What he watched was Steve Smith light it up for 35 tonight. But Glenn Rice had 34 and hit 13 straight in the game. And Rice leads the Hornets to a 97-87 win. Good game over at Jacobs Field, the rubber game of this series between the Indians and White Sox. And let's see what happened here. Mike Cargrove hoping that his team could hold on to the ball, hoping Jared Wright could keep it in the park. Will Cordero's first pitch that he faced is a White Sox, and he hit it out. Then Albert Bell in a 3-3 game hits one over the head of Kenny Lofton. And suddenly Chicago looks like they're going to win the series. Here comes Frank Thomas. Here comes Frank Thomas. Come on, Frank. 4-3 Chicago. But in the eighth, the Indians down one. An unlikely hero, Jeff Branson, hits it off the wall. Two runs score. The Indians end up winning it by a score of 5-4. Let's hear from Branson after the game. Yeah, it, it, it definitely makes you feel good when you come off and contribute, you know. You, like I say, we don't get, I don't get a lot of playing time, you know, none of the bench players do, but like I say, when you come off the bench and, and uh, have a quality at bat and do something to help the team win, it definitely makes you feel good. Good job, uh, Jeff. Nice hit. Red Sox here tomorrow night. They've won 11 out of 12. Stanley Cup playoffs tonight. Montreal taking on Pittsburgh at the Igloo. A minute 49 left to go. Regulation time. Pittsburgh down a goal. Yaramir Yarger, he'll tie it, send it into overtime, but Montreal just won it. 3-2 in overtime to go one up in the series. Here are the scores. <laughs>